What's going on guys? I am back and we've got another product to review today. This one is from Arctic. Now these are the same guys that make the MX4 thermal paste that I'm sure many of you use and that I used on my uh, Ryzen CPU cooler roundup. But they sent me their Freezer 33 eSports edition CPU cooler. Now you may be wondering what the hell makes this an eSports cooler or an eSports edition cooler. Uh, I'll be honest, I have no clue. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, this thing does come in like red and green and yellow and white, so maybe that's where they get the eSports from. Uh, I don't know, but it sounds like a terrible name, that's all I can say. But hopefully this thing performs so we can look past that. Anyway, this is a $50 cooler, it comes with 220mm fans in a push-pull configuration. Uh, normally this only accounts for like 1 or 2 degrees in most scenarios, but if you want to maximize your cooling performance, then you can... Uh, at times add that second fan in there. So both fans also have fluid dynamic bearings and an operating range of 200 to 1800 RPM. So if you want to kind of slow down the fans to get a nice, you know, quiet operation or you want to ramp them up to get that extra cooling potential, um, you have the option there with that wide range. Aside from that, there are four six millimeter direct contact copper heat pipes. Uh, there's a black coating on the aluminum heatsink there, which kind of gives it a stealth look. Also, both fans have sleeved cables, which gives a little premium look. I like that. By the way, this does fit all current Intel platforms, including socket 1151. And if you're on the AMD side, it supports the AM4 platform. There's even a Threadripper specific model for you guys with like a 1950X or 1920X or something like that. Anyway, let's go ahead and install this thing. We'll talk about that process as well as how the performance is. Now, as far as the installation goes on the AM4 platform, it actually wasn't too bad at all. It's pretty simple. There's just uh, two brackets that attach to the heatsink, which then screw into the stock backplate, and then you attach the fans and you're pretty much done. That's one of the things I like about installing coolers on the AM4 platform is a lot of them use the stock backplate, which makes things much easier. When you go back to installing coolers on the Intel platform and you've got to pull off the stock cooler all the time and put these stupid screw inserts in from underneath the uh, motherboard. It's just, it's just a pain. AM4 is so much simpler for the most part. The only thing I didn't like about installing this was uh, the thermal paste that they give you it comes in a small packet instead of a small tube. I don't like that. I like the small tube better because it's reusable. The packet is like, once you open it, then you could end up squeezing it and it comes out, gets everywhere. I don't know. It's just, uh, it's not as nice as a small tube. Also, the wiring should be simplified a little bit. Uh, they should have just a single Y cable for connecting the two fans to one CPU header. Right now, both fans have Y splitters on their own, and it made it a little bit confusing as far as how to connect them. But those were really the only problems that I had. Uh, as far as performance goes, uh, this thing easily beat out the Wraith Stealth Cooler on my Ryzen 3 1200, which was overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. Now, uh, I will admit I probably could have dialed in the overclock a little bit better, but the extra heat from the voltage there will just test the uh, or stress the coolers a little bit better, so no big deal there. But anyway, yeah, you guys can see here, they're pretty much not in the same realm in terms of cooling. This does cost 50 bucks though, so if you're running a Ryzen 3 1200, uh, this probably is not the best option for you if you're looking for something a little better than the stock cooler. But if you've got like a Ryzen 5 1600 or a Ryzen 7 1700, this may be a cooler to consider if you are looking to push that 3.9 to 4 gigahertz overclock. And uh, with that said, I think Arctic did a good job. They just uh, need to change the name. That's pretty much it guys, <laughs> like this video if you like this uh, type of content, leave a comment down below, let me know what you think, and I will see you guys next time, see ya!